There's one concept in physics that anytime I talk to people about it, they're always really skeptical of it. And that is dark matter. Matter that only interacts with gravity and not with light. So we can't see it, you know, in any normal way. But just like how we can't see the wind, but we know it's there because the trees move, we have our own ways of knowing that dark matter is there. But they all rely on the fact that we have understood gravity right. Very recently, there's been some research published that suggests that might not be the case. So is this the end for dark matter? Now, I've talked before on this channel about the decades worth of evidence and research that piled up and piled up and piled up before astrophysicists begrudgingly agreed that dark matter must exist and it became accepted theory, canon, if you will. And I've talked before on this channel as well about all of the legitimate alternate theories to gravity that there are, that don't need dark matter, that are sort of rivals to our current accepted theory of gravity, which is Einstein's theory of general relativity. Now I'm gonna summarize a little bit what those videos said, but I'm not gonna go into as much detail, so check those out as well if you're interested. I'll link them up in little cards above and down in the video description below. Now, one of these alternate theories of gravity is called MOND. Modified Newtonian Dynamics. And it essentially takes Newton's equations of gravity and modifies them slightly with this extra term. And those extra terms only matter and only start to dominate the equation when you have something really big that's accelerating very, very slowly. Like a galaxy of stars that is rotating, for example. And the speed of rotation of a galaxy has always been in the top five pieces of evidence that we have for dark matter. Because they don't behave the way that we expect. When we look at a galaxy, we see that the brightest part of a galaxy is the very center. So we assume there are more stars there and therefore that's where most of the mass is concentrated. Very similar to the solar system, right? Where the majority of the mass, more than 99%, is actually concentrated in the center in the sun. And if you look at the speed that the planets orbit around the sun, you can see that it drops off as you get further away from the sun. But in galaxies, stars don't do that. It actually rises as you get further out to the center until it sort of plateaus out towards the edge. And this doesn't make sense, not even just in Einstein's theory of general relativity, but Newton's law of gravity as well that we all learn in high school. It means that there must be more mass on the outskirts of the galaxy than there is in the middle of the galaxy, but that's not where we see all the stars, so therefore there must be a huge amount of matter that we can't see that's out there and black holes and gas and dust and brown dwarfs and all these other things that don't shine, that's not enough to account for the amount of matter that would need to be there to explain those flat rotation curves at the edges of galaxies. But if you use MOND as your theory of gravity instead, and you have this extra term in Newton's equations, then that problem goes away because the stars are orbiting at exactly the speed that you expect them to be on the outskirts, even if there is no extra matter there. But that's not everything solved. MOND also does have a lot of problems. The main one being the fact that it predicted that gravitational waves wouldn't travel at the speed of light. But then in 2017, we found that they did when we detected the simultaneous detection of gravitational waves and optical light and X-ray light and all sorts of different gamma rays and everything from the merger of two neutron stars. So despite not having detected any dark matter or knowing what it's made of, like, come on, particle physicists, like, what are you doing? Like, we're waiting on you. I gave you one job. Which, to be fair, is very difficult because it doesn't interact with light and so therefore all of our usual ways of detecting things won't work with dark matter. But despite the fact that we haven't detected any of it, Einstein's theory of general relativity combined with 90% of the universe's matter being dark matter still remains our best theory to explain what we have seen in the universe. So all of the observations we've made and the evidence that we've collected is sort of piled up in its favour. 
But this new research that has come out has been led by Che and collaborators, and they've added evidence to the pile in favour of Mond and not dark matter. So what did they actually find here and what were they actually testing? To, to understand that, we really have to go back to the basics, like physics 101. So say we have an object like a car of mass M. Newton's second law of motion says that the force needed to accelerate that car is proportional to the car's mass, something we call the inertial mass of the car, i.e. how much it resists motion. Now, at the same time, Newton's law of gravity says that if we were to drop that car from a big height above the ground, say H, the force felt by both the car and Earth is proportional to the mass of the Earth, the mass of the car, and how far apart the two are. This mass is what's called the gravitational mass, how much an object attracts other objects in the universe due to gravity. Now, Newton assumed that these two masses, the inertial mass and the gravitational mass, were one and the same. And that's been confirmed with a series of experiments called the Erdbus experiments that show that that's true, at least on the scales that we can test in the lab. And that's something that's now known as the equivalence principle. But in Mond, the equivalence principle doesn't hold. The inertial mass doesn't equal the gravitational mass. Instead, the inertial mass, this how much an object resists motion, is also dependent on the gravitational pull of every other single object in the entire universe. In other words, if you try to accelerate your car, you're doing it fighting against the pull of the Andromeda galaxy as well. In the theory of Mond, this is called the external field effect, or EFE, and it would mean that there would be a relationship between the speed a galaxy rotates and how dense of an environment it's found in, i.e. how many galaxy neighbours does it have? Does it have a lot of galaxy neighbours, or is it found relatively alone in the universe? And to the scientists' disbelief in this research study, that is what they found. They found this relationship. So in 153 galaxies that they studied, they found that in very dense environments where there was lots of galaxies grouped together, all those galaxies were pulling on the stars on the outskirts of the other galaxies, meaning that the rotation curve sort of dipped on the outskirts where the stars were being slowed down by the pull of the galaxies nearby. Whereas galaxies that are in a much more isolated environment that are left fairly alone in the universe, there's nothing pulling on the stars of the edges of those galaxies. And so the rotation curve is once again quite flat because there's nothing to slow down the stars on the edges. Now, apparently the authors spent months checking their work just to make sure that it was robust and would stand up to very intense scrutiny because they knew that it was going to get that. They checked it for measurement error and systematic error and statistical errors, but by the end of it, they just couldn't deny what they found. You know, even the most diehard of dark matter fans could not deny what had been found. Now, having said that, that does not mean that we are going to, you know, just tear up the theory of dark matter and throw it out the window, because this is just one piece of evidence. It does not outweigh the giant pile of decades worth of research and evidence we already have in favour of dark matter. There's more work still to be done here, including doing this again, but with a much larger sample of galaxies. You know, I will be a lot happier if this is found with 153,000 galaxies rather than just 153, because that could just turn out to be, you know, random statistical fluctuation or something like that. And there are also still the other observations of the universe that Mond fails to explain, including the mass in galaxy clusters, where galaxies are all grouped together, where it still needs a small amount of dark matter to explain the observations. So as usual, more work does need to be done, but I'm really curious and interested to see what will come out of this. You know, whether it will be a full shake-up of the theory of dark matter, I don't know, I, I doubt that personally. But I can imagine a future where perhaps, you know, the best bits of each theory are sort of merged together into a sort of newer, shinier, better theory that we have. And maybe it turns out that Mond or dark matter and general relativity, well, each of them maybe got it half right. 
Before we get to the bloopers, I just want to thank this week's video sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a website with learning courses across a huge range of science and maths topics. The courses are interactive and this is what I love about them because not only does it engage you with the topic that you're learning about, but it also really helps you to visualize what's going on and actually remember what you've learned as well. Now, as part of their ridiculously detailed astronomy course, they have a section on cosmology where you can learn more about dark matter, why we think it exists, and the mass that underpins this best theory we have to explain our observations of the universe. So if that sounds like something that you've always wanted to wrap your head around or learn about the maths behind dark matter and you want to support me and my channel, then head to brilliant.org forward slash Dr. Becky. That's D-R-B-E-C-K-Y and sign up completely for free. Plus the first 200 people that go to that link that it's in the video description will get 20% off an annual premium subscription, which I think is pretty incredible. So thank you so much to Brilliant. Which, to be fair, is very difficult because... I'm difficult. The rotation curve stayed fairly flat because the stars on the outskirts weren't being pulled on anything from... <laughs> motorbike. I'd sooner try modifying gravity. And to the authors of this paper's, like, dish belief, that's what... Dish... Dish belief? I believe in dishes.